Hey gents, one of my most frequently asked questions is about buying a suit and setting a budget, whether it's your first one or for any suit. A suit is a big purchase and after buying dozens of suits for work and ultimately for my channel in the past few years, I wanted to share the framework that I've started to develop around the ways to think about spending money on a suit. We'll talk about your cost per wear, understanding what you value, and then the four price buckets that I've identified to indicate suit quality as you're looking to buy. If you're looking for recommendations on brands, I'm not really going to cover that in this video. I am working on a second video where I have all of the suggestions for made to measure suit companies out there. I will link to a page below that will be on my website that I will constantly update for brand recommendations at each price point. First things first, you decide you're going to buy a suit and now you want to figure out what you want to spend on that suit. The easiest top line way to say this is buy the best you can afford. As with anything in life, you get what you pay for. And especially in suiting, it's worth having one high quality charcoal Italian made suit than it is to have three or four polyester JCPenney suits that you got a great deal on. Take a breath, don't rush this, and save. Don't be sucked in by deals, but buy smart. So let's break this out a little bit. Cost per wear. When you hear that a bespoke suit maker charges $3,000 for a suit, that sounds astronomical, but it's not. There's a big difference between overpriced and expensive. So consider the guy that's buying that $3,000 suit, possibly a Wall Street banker that wears a suit every single day. Not only is it a small percentage of his income, but if he wears that suit three days a week for five years, he's essentially paying $4 per cost of wear in that suit, and he's looking damn good while he's closing deals. If you're buying a black JCPenney suit for $80 and you're going to wear it to one wedding and one funeral in the next five years, not only are you not going to look as good, but you're also spending way more on that suit at $40 per wear than the value you're actually getting out of it. There's also a good chance that the guy buying bespoke highly values having fine English or Italian wools in his suiting, and JCPenney does not. This leads me into understanding what you value in a purchase, and I think this could be its own video, but if price is all that you value, you'll be shopping at Zara, H&M, Macy's, JCPenney, because you're looking to save money and spend as little as possible. If you value quality, this will lead you away from department stores and fast fashion and either take you into the entry level made to measure space or you could go vintage. Price still plays a factor here, but if you're willing to take the time to look into traditional menswear brands, look for your right size online, get them tailored, you can get a traditional Ralph Lauren or Zenga suit. It's just going to take some more time and it takes a little bit of knowledge to get into that. If you value fit, you should really know a tailor, but this will also lead you into the made to measure or bespoke route. And I'll link to a great video by Brock at The Modest Man where he talks about off the rack, made to measure and bespoke. Now there's also time. So there's the time you're either going to spend hunting down deals and looking for more information like this. It's the time you're going to spend looking through vintage shops on eBay and researching more brands, or all of that can be saved by walking into a made to measure shop, getting your fit done right and having it delivered several weeks later. So understanding what you value. Is it price? Is it quality? Which includes construction and fabric? Is it fit or is it time? And now for the price bucket. So I've purchased suits from across the range from $37 to $1,500. And I've broken this down to indicate quality. This does exclude vintage. If somebody out there wants to do a video with me on vintage menswear, I'm all ears guys. I just want to give you the best information. So you, but we'll start off with the sub $400 suit. So these are your Indochinos, your I Taylor is in there. These are your department stores, fast fashion. All of this stuff in the $400 price point is low quality. This is where a ton of suits are sold. Most of them will be made in China or parts of Asia. This is also where some of the off the rack styles from Suit Supply fits in, but you'll probably need an extra like $20 to $50 for tailoring at that point. And then you get into the $400 to $799 price point. This is where things get super interesting because in this price point, you're looking at some of the Ludlow suits from J. Crew. You can get suits made in Italy of Italian wools. You can get fine English wools, tr traditional heritage, nice woolen products in this price point. And this is really where you can get that one suit to last you for 10 years or more. Then you look at the $800 to $1,500 price point. This is when you're starting to get into like entry level bespoke, very high end made to measure. So much finer woolen fabrics. This is where you have articles of style starts to sit here. Anything you buy in this price point is going to be high quality fabrics and it's going to be made to measure at least. Now you get into the $1,500 price points and this is where you're getting all into bespoke. And this is where people need to wear suits every day and look really good doing it. They're gonna go spend money on a nice suit. It's also important to consider the lifespan of a suit. I think 10 years is where you can get, if you get a high quality suit, you buy it so that it's not very trendy and you really take care of it. But just remember the no suit is timeless. Think about all the money Wall Street bankers spent on the 80s on those suits, tens of thousands of dollars, and it all looks very out of place in a modern context. 
You also consider Sean Connery's suits in the 60s. They look really modern today, but in the 80s, those looked like slim, old-fashioned suits at the time because all fashion is cyclical, and so that's why I think 10 years is a good frame of mind to get a nice quality suit, have it last for a while. And I, you know, when I think of the 80s, I think of either the patterns, some of the pinstriping and the, and the patterns that were used then, or like the really low gorges in the 80s, that sort of thing. So if you buy a suit today, don't get it too trendy and it can last for a long time, but don't expect it to last your entire life because your body will fluctuate and everything else. There you have it, gents. I hope that answers your questions as you try to navigate the suit world. If you're looking for that one suit in your wardrobe that's going to be perfect for a wedding, a date night, a funeral, and you can wear the crap out of it, it should be navy or charcoal and it'll probably cost you about $400. If you wear suits on a weekly or monthly basis, then that's your starting point and you can start to do some of the cost per wear calculations and understanding, you know, do you want a really fine suit? And if you only need to wear a suit one time ever or you work in a restaurant and need a, uh, something to really beat up, you can look at that $37 Alain Dupati video that I did because uh, that's a good place to start. What I try to champion on my channel are great products at good prices, buying smart, and then also choosing to be classic over trendy but always modern. Till next time, gents, this is The Cavalier.